Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is building the business case, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association, helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Plan and Implement Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll explore how to clarify your organization's needs and to differentiate from among the different types of metrics available. Developing the business case for your information management initiative is one of the most critical tasks of any. For a poor job here means the project will be burdened with improperly set expectations at best and terminated before beginning at worst. This activity centers on developing and communicating the business reasons for initiating the project or endeavor and weighing the associated time and expenditure against the value of the project's specific outcomes. In taking it on, it's important to remember that a business case is not the same thing as a business plan. Where a plan is more strategic in broad strokes, a case is more tactical and focused on specific costs and advantages in terms of both hard dollars and soft benefits. One of the first steps in making the business case is clarifying the business need. This involves more than simply gathering data. Rather, it also mandates collecting opinions and perspectives from all the relevant stakeholders, supporters and detractors alike, to describe both the tangible and intangible benefits to derive from the project. This can be done using a variety of techniques, and like as not, you'll use more than one when the time comes. Among the more popular are simple observation, brainstorming, formal surveys, personal interviews, and focus groups. Besides helping you to truly understand what their needs and desires are, spending time with stakeholders is crucial to helping them believe that your effort will result in something that will truly benefit them. This is about the best way there is to cultivate their buy-in to the initiative and any changes in process or technology that they'll have to accommodate. And that buy-in is crucial to success since non-belief will breed skepticism and resistance and ultimately will sour the whole experience no matter how good an idea it may be. Part and parcel of clarifying the business need is developing an understanding of how both the current and future state of the organization are to be measured, and thus, how to chart and manage the activity in between. It's very tough to determine where, when, why, and to what degree improvements are being made, or regressions are cropping up, if you don't have any current benchmarks to compare them to. The challenge here is that there are so many different kinds of metrics to choose from, and it's important to know how to think about each one. Financially quantifiable and non-financially quantifiable data are exactly what they sound like, directly measurable types of information that either do or do not relate to financial performance. Cost decreases, income enhancement, and the time value of money are three common examples of financially quantifiable data. Used in cost-benefit analyses, these usually are involved in the setting of targets and dates by which those targets will be met. Examples of non-financially quantifiable data include reduced processing times, shorter sales cycles, and quicker information retrieval. Numeric targets can be set for these types of benefits to measure whether they're being delivered or not. For example, a metric can be set for the availability of information, and targets could be set at a departmental level to measure the number of lost documents or the number of times problems occurred when finding, retrieving, or sharing records. Non-quantifiable or intangible data refers to information about something that isn't directly measurable but clearly has value to the organization. Examples here include improved customer satisfaction, shorter time to market, and better employee morale. Note that measurable targets can be set for these using indirect measures, like, say, a reduction in employee turnover rate in the matter of the last example, that indicate the benefit is being achieved. Qualifiable data relates to the measurements of softer issues like opinions and experiences, rather than the hard factors like money, time, and simple counts of the number of times something happens. 
In the context of a website, the qualifiable data involves user satisfaction ratings or confidence levels, while the quantifiable data measures users' time on site, clicks, and successful task completion. Sustainable data is that which can be communicated to and understood by unknown users and unknown processing systems today and at unknown times in the future. Related to format and systems obsolescence in archiving terms, it centers more on long-term relevance in the context of the business case, such as the ability to capture and compare certain system performance metrics, say storage capacities and response times, today and 10 years from now. Value-added data combines different types of data to deepen an organization's understanding of a given issue. Roughly equivalent to a website mashup, it might take the server access statistics of a distributed content management system and roll up the times of day, length of time connected, and repositories touched by users in a given location in order to gain greater insight into the organization's network bandwidth requirements. This module explored how to clarify your organization's needs and to differentiate from among the different types of metrics available. Having completed it, you may next wish to view the module on the elements and expertise needed to develop a solid business case and to perform a sound risk analysis. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.